Hello everyone and welcome to this different style of video that I'm going to try out maybe every now and then when they do developer updates or patch notes or stuff like that and I just wanted to go over the developer update with you because I saw that it was released today and yeah I actually read through everything already and that's when I thought hmm, maybe I should make a video and give my thoughts on the developer update. So we do know we are having the mid-chapter patch next Tuesday and all the changes in this update are going to be on there. So let's get into it. So in this update they are updating the cannibal and the hillbilly. Now the cannibal changes are probably more significant here because his base kit is getting completely reworked in a way. So they say the cannibal's chainsaw now activates like the hillbillies, rather than needing to be fully charged and then released. This small change prevents instances where you release the button a sliver too early and cancel your chainsaw accidentally. You won't want to hold it for too long though or else Leatherface will go into a tantrum. So Bubba's chainsaw will now have three charges on it. When you start your chainsaw sweep, one of the charges will be consumed. Pressing the power button again while the sweep is active will refresh it and consume another charge, allowing you to continue using your chainsaw for another two seconds. You'll want to assess situations carefully because each charge will also extend the tantrum and missed attack cooldown. So more charges obviously can backfire. Charges will refill at a rate of one every few seconds, so no definite values there. So Leatherface's maximum movement speed while using his chainsaw will be 5.29 meters per second. This in conjunction with the other changes mentioned above will make the cannibal feel much better to play and more threatening to play against. So let's see what we have here. Whoops. All right, and then, okay. So what, that consumed all three charges? At least they give us a lot of footage here. So look, he's revving the chainsaw. And then it just consumes all three. Okay, so start it, uses one, one. So it does make his chainsaw kind of like a hybrid of the hillbillies now, where he can actually go pretty far in his chainsaw sprint. So that is actually going to make the cannibal more deadly because um, one of the things that makes the cannibal weak is that he is slow. He's just base killer movement speed. When he uses a chainsaw, he can only really capitalize on it if the survivors are in a bad position. So with this, he can actually catch up to a survivor and can preemptively use his chainsaw to get people. Now it also looks like if you rev your chainsaw and you do not complete, you know, the charge bar of the chainsaw by the time your power um, hits all the way through, it will force you to tantrum slash do that attack cooldown. And I guess it's the maximum duration of all three charges there. So we're gonna have to see how that works more in the PTB, but it looks like it's punishing the killer for revving their chainsaw. The devs want you to commit to the chainsaw and make you go all the way through, it looks like here. Because, watch this again. The power button completes over here, but the progress bar doesn't, and he gets all three wasted. So I think this is a good change to him for the faster movement speed. The charges add something very unique, and we'll have to see how that actually interacts in-game. Although losing all your charges just for revving the chainsaw, I don't know about that one. Why should killers be punished for just revving their chainsaw to try and bait survivors to make dumb decisions? Now let's take a look at his add-ons. 
So, you know, the cannibal add-ons are basically hillbilly add-ons with a few variations. So it looks like they're going to actually revamp some of them. They're going to put it on the add the same add-on formula for all the other killers. They don't list all of them, but here's some examples. Shop lubricant. Downing a survivor with a chainsaw. While no other survivors are in your terror radius, will hide the survivor's aura for 20 seconds. So it's kind of like a cheap version of Knockout there. So it could be good. Make survivors think you have Knockout. Pick them up before they can see their aura. Uh, depth, gauge, depth Gauge Rake. Um, increases number of charges. Doesn't say how many charges. Since it's very rare, I'm guessing it could increase it by two. And then we have a rare one that increases it by one. Or it could increase it by three, and we have a rare that increases it by two, and then a common that increases it by one. We'll see it when the PTV comes out. Slightly increases charge time, slightly decreases chainsaw sweep's maximum speed. So it slows you down. Then we have one of the ultra rares hitting a survivor with the chainsaw replenishes its charges. This actually sounds like a pretty good ultra rare for Bubba. That being said, you can only really use it if the survivors are grouped up. Now, perk changes. I'm kind of surprised to see some perk changes here. Franklin's Demise. So they took off the durability loss entirely from this, I guess, to go with the fact that items no longer disappear when you um, run out all the durability on them. So this is updating to the item change. It says, the lost item will be consumed by the entity after 120, 100, or 90 seconds, if it is not picked up before the timer runs out. Reveals the aura of items on the ground within 32 meters in a white aura. The aura item, the aura of the item fades to red until they are consumed by the entity. So it's kind of like Plunder's Instinct in a killer perk here, and it actually is a big buff to Franklin's because this actually guarantees the item to be killed. So for survivors, it's going to be really hard. Like 90 seconds, that's not a lot of time. If you are getting chased by the killer, you probably will not lose the killer in time to get your item. Now sometimes you can't pick up your item after getting hit, but this will be very deadly for items now. Unless you're maybe playing with another friend that can go pick up your item or something before it dies. Because what you can do with this is just like Pick up the item and drop it again, and then it will not be killed by the entity. So, Franklin's Demise, it's gonna be worse for survivors now. Um, knock up, Knockout. So the same effect as before, you know survivors cannot see dying survivors auras within 32, 24, 60 meter range, unless they're in that range. But they added two new effects. Survivors put into the dying state by your basic attack crawl 50% slower for 15 seconds. During this time, survivors are afflicted by the blindness stats effect. So this is a buff to knockout, because if the survivor in the dying state has blindness on them, they have no clue where all their teammates are on the map, so they cannot crawl to a teammate for help. All they can do is recover. Now, the crawl speed, I don't think... I mean, it can be nice, I guess, but I don't think it's going to be that much of an impact you wouldn't run knockout just because you slow their slug speed. Now, downside, it looks like the blindness stats effect is only going to be applied for 15 seconds, which is not that long, so... I'm not sure how much of a buff this is for that perk, just because, you know, these seem like nice additions to the perk, but it doesn't really make it, you know, OP or anything. Now we are on the hillbilly. So they are going to do some slight changes to the hillbilly, but for the most part, his power is going to be the same. So they say they're happy with the way Billy performs. So they're very minimal changes. There's not removing any options with the chainsaw. So they want to focus on skill-based gameplay and put an emphasis on using your chainsaw effectively. Now, I do not agree with this new mechanic. It is the overheat mechanic. Revving the chainsaw will now cause it to accumulate heat which can be seen in the lower left corner, around the power icon, and on the chainsaw. Sprinting with the chainsaw will also cause it to heat up at a much lower rate. The heat will dissipate over time when the chainsaw is not being used. If the overheat meter fills up completely, it can no longer be used until it's completely cooled down. 
When this happens, it will cool down at an increased rate. If the chainsaw overheats as you're sprinting, your sprint will not be interrupted. The goals behind this change is to add a small drawback to misusing the chainsaw and to add a bit more depth in the chainsaw with resource management. I don't know about that one. Overheat. This overheat mechanic seems like a straight up nerf for hillbilly to make things easier for survivors, in my opinion. But there are a lot of things we don't know though, like how long does it take to reach maximum heat on the chainsaw, um, how fast does the heat dissipate. If these things are not that bad, then it could be not a big deal, so let's take a look. So what is it represented by this, I guess? Oh, so it looks like it overheats a lot faster when you're just revving. And look, night. What? So you can't use it for the entire duration of the overheat? They have like double turning here, double turning add ons. So it overheats way faster if you just rev it, it overheats slower when you're chainsaw sprinting. Wow, if you cannot use your chainsaw at all until that, until this goes all the way back down, that's gonna be so. That's such a big nerf for Billy. Like, obviously, you wanna use your chainsaw effectively, and not a lot of Billies will always rev it all the time. But here's the thing revving your chainsaw is important when playing Kill Billy because it's for mind games. You rev your chainsaw at power loops, it doesn't really affect your movement speed or anything. So you mind game survivors they, to think that you're going to chainsaw them or something so that they kind of get scared and make a mistake. Another thing is that sometimes survivors in the corn can be hard to hit with your chainsaw and a lot of times survivors will be near you but you don't want to use your chainsaw right away because you know, they could flip, and then you'll miss them. It looks like it is very significant here. Like, what, at least 30 seconds maybe? 15, 30 seconds that you can't use your chainsaw? But that is, a uh, that's really bad if the overheat does accumulate that fast on just revving. There's going to be way less mind game potential for Hillbilly now with this change and I don't think this is a needed change at all. They, they didn't need to nerf Hillbilly. Survivors already have things easy enough. So now like Billy can't counter people that run all over the place and you can just 360 punish Hillbillies with no skill at all now. Add-on changes. So, Marley increases chainsaw sprint steering. Dad's boots. Didn't he already have boots? Pig house gloves. Marley decreased the heat gained while s when starting to rev the chainsaw. Lower pro chains. Continue chainsaw sprint after breaking the pallet. Survivors hit with the chainsaw are damaged for a single health state. So it's kind of like speed limiter, but with pallets and no blood point gains. Uh, this ultra rare, kind of trash in my opinion. Sure, you can t continue your chainsaw sprint after breaking a pallet, but let's be honest here. How many survivors are just going to sit there after they throw a pallet so that you can chainsaw through the pallet and hit them? Most survivors, when they throw the pallet, they'll move to the side of the pallet. They won't just stand in front of it and let you hit them. And only being able to do one health state just to break pallets and go through them uh, I don't think this is good at all. Like, no survivor is going to stand out a pallet, so it, do <laughs> it doesn't make sense. Like, the only way you could get this is on noob survivors, but even then, it's only one health state. It's not going to get you much. Unless they're injured. But even then, the survivor is most likely not going to stand in front of the pallet. They're probably going to move to the side. Okay, perks. Lightborn. They are changing it up. You are immune to blindness caused by flashlights and firecrackers. 
Holy moly, I did not see that before. I only saw this part. What? Wow. Survivors that attempt blinding you have their aura revealed for 6, 8, or 10 seconds? Oh my gosh. That is a humongous buff to Lightborn. Probably every clear that at least cares about flashlights now is gonna run it, but... Does that mean you can't flashlight oh, save against killers with Lightborn? Okay, well, here's the thing about Lightborn that's already in the game. The, it basically already kind of gives you flashlight blind immunity. I mean, it makes you so resistant to flashlights that um, survivors cannot flashlight blind save against you. So I think having this immunity to blindness isn't really needed because... Lightborn already extends the amount of time a survivor needs to shine a flashlight or a firecracker at you to get you blind. So much so that it wastes their durability of the flashlight and stuff like that. So we don't need immunity on Lightborn. Plus, there is no counterplay to being completely immune to flashlights. So this is kind of like a flashlight nerf as well. Like, they don't want to change flashlights, so they put in Lightborn. The question is, will more killers run this now? Because the Lightborn that's already in the game gives you practically flashlight immunity. So, I wonder if some killers are going to read immunity, and then all of a sudden they're going to decide to run Lightborn just because they read immunity in the description. Lightborn right now is pretty good at preventing you from getting flashlight blinded. But I don't think Lightborn needs immunity at all. It's just, there's no counterplay. So it's the bad, bad design on the Lightborn. Um, next, Tinkerer. So they're changing the repair progress to 70%. And then gives you undetectable for 12, 14, 16. So basically just a numbers buff there. And I think this is a fair change because with the Tinkerer right now, by the time you get the notification and get over to that gen, it's done. Like, there's nothing you can do. So giving you more time to get there to stop the survivors is very important. So this is a nice buff for Tinkerer. Now, besides all those huge changes, we have server improvements. So let's see. Currently hits are handled on the killer's end. If they appear to be within range of a survivor, they will be able to hit them. In most cases, this works well. <laughs> uh-huh. Right? The killer is able to reliably hit survivors, and the survivors see roughly the same thing on their end with a small amount of latency. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. If the killer has a weak connection on the server, however, it can cause some strange-looking hits that appear to be out of range, most notably at pallets and windows. I like how it's like reliably, but I swear more often than not, killers get these BS hits on survivors. And even when I play killer, sometimes I see some hits I really should not have gotten on a survivor. Um, also, Huntress Hatchet hits can be really wonky with this um, disconnect. Now, during the up coming PTB, we'll be testing server side hit validation. Anytime the killer hits a survivor, the server will check and see if the hit was possible within a reasonable margin. If the survivor is too far to be hit, the hit is negated. This sounds like a lot of bugs are going to come out of this one. Because it basically is going to take twice as long to communicate the information. Now, even though it's twice as long, it's still going to be like within milliseconds of this information being sent out, but still. To put it simply, if you have a stable connection, you won't notice any difference. As killer, your hits will appear instantaneous and should not be rejected. As survivor, however, a killer with a weak connection should no longer be able to hit you from further away due to their high latency. Second, we'll be increasing the tick rate of our servers from 30Hz to 60Hz. Basically, this means server sends out information twice as frequently as before, so what you see will be more accurate. Well, we'll see, we'll see. Um, but that's good, faster servers. Monitoring changes a lot. Promo code system. Last change. New promo code system will appear in the in-game store. In the in-game store. It allows you to redeem a promo code for in-game goodies on any platform. 
Starting with the mid-chapter update, you'll notice a redeem code button in the featured page of the store. The rewards can be anything from clothing, blood points, or even auric cells. So this sounds like something really cool that they can do for streamers and stuff. They could give streamers like skin codes or auric cell codes or blood point codes. And then the streamers can do giveaways, probably the fog whispers. This is also something that maybe behavior can do, like what they did in the past with cosmetic codes at like E3 or whatever they go to. They could hand out codes to people that visit the booth and they get free blood points or auric cells or whatever. So we could have some cool giveaway opportunities with this. Look, keep your eyes peeled once the system goes out, you have a chance to get some codes soon, so they'll probably do a giveaway right after this goes live in the end of the update. So there you have it. Hillbilly nurse leather face buff question mark. We'll see how it works. Um, perk changes and server improvements. Well, I think the Leatherface change is good, you know. He's a weak killer and I hate playing Leatherface because he's weak and slow and I just don't like his playstyle. But the Hillbilly change, mm, I don't think we need the overheat mechanic because it's just, there's no mind game potential for Hillbilly now really with the overheat. Like you can't rev your chainsaw and mind game people. So I hope they maybe nerf how fast the meter fills when you're revving your chainsaw, but you know, don't like it at all. Um, we'll see how good the add-ons are when the PTB goes live, and when the PTB goes live, stay tuned because I will be making a video on the public test build so you guys can see all these changes for real and not just the same two clips played over and over again. And um, please write in the comments below, let me know what you think of this developer update, the Leatherface changes, Hillbilly changes, um, Perk changes, all the stuff that was discussed in this developer update. Let me know what you think, because I'd love to hear your opinions about it. We can maybe discuss more about it in the comments below as well, if you guys want to. Also, tell me what you think about this style of video, and if you guys like it, then I will make it for future updates and stuff like that too. And if you're not subscribed, well, make sure to subscribe so you know when the public test build video comes on up and you can be informed on the latest Dead by Daylight news. And don't forget to like the video if you found this video informative or helpful or you just want to leave a like for you just feel like it. Anyways, thank you very much for watching and as always, good luck out there in the fog and see you next time.